Welcome back to our Hidden Secrets series at the Mersey Tunnel. In this video we're going to explore the George's Dock building, its huge ventilation fans and some hidden rooms. Let's start by entering the airlock doors in the roof of the building. Okay, so we're about to go through the big red door with the precarious looking door handles. So this is going to be the ventilation room, all the machinery to keep the air moving around the tunnels. So let's head inside. This is what we like. Going down into the underbelly. Oh wow, look how big this is already. You can smell all the exhaust fumes in here. Just look at the size of this room. So this is inside the George's Dock tower that you see from outside. Got the huge turbine engines down there driving a big propeller in there I presume. And uh, pumping all the air around the various tunnels or the tunnel which is a few hundred yards below us and heading off that way. You can see all the soot on the walls here from where the exhaust fumes are coming in. There's the chimney vent for the tunnel right down there. It's really hard to describe but it smells like a bus garage. You can smell the exhaust fumes in here coming up from that tunnel. It's all the carbon monoxide. size of these big drums here. So I'm presuming they hold the propellers in there. Another one here. And here we go. Let's look at the size of that. Okay, so just behind me, this huge motor here driving this uh, turbine to my right. It's actually made, I don't know if you can see it on there, but it says uh, made in Huddersfield. So a bit of Yorkshire engineering there, right behind us. So there we go, a clearer shot there of where these gearboxes were made. So this is a gearbox on the right hand side and you've got the, the actual motor on the left, but it was made in Huddersfield. And then here's the actual motor here driving the turbine. Which is... So for any of you fortunate enough to drive an Aston Martin, you would have heard of the DBS gearbox. Well, there it is. That is where it comes from. And that is a DBS gearbox. So right behind me, we're looking at one of the giant turbines or the exhaust fans here. Now it's a bit dark in here, but you can just see it behind me. That is probably 20 feet high, being turned by this motor at the side of me. So obviously that's driving or sucking the air out of the tunnel and drawing it up the ventilation shaft just down here and then eventually up out of the roof, getting all those car exhaust fumes out of the tunnel. Now you can't, you can't get it on the camera, it's so weird how big that is, that is massive. these huge chambers here. That's the basin. So the basin for the turbine. So this is what we're saying about how big they are. It's got a whole bottom half here just for the turbine and on that side as well. Another one there. The and then GE1 for George's Dock Fan 1 and another over there for Fan 2. We've got this vintage 
looking contraption here. Oh, wow. So this contains the original starter motors for the fans from the early 1930s, or from the 1930s. They don't use them any longer, and you're just saying mainly because uh, they can't find the people to repair them when they break down. So they've upgraded it to a modern system now, but these do still work, or they could still work. You can see again the old porcelain breakers up there. We saw in Winter Gardens, if you remember that, the old porcelain breakers. So just behind me here, let me get this right, is what is known as a mercury arc rectifier. I think I got that right. And uh, basically it was used to control the lifts. We're not sure how, so comment down below how this used to work. But we do know that it used to glow up. Obviously mercury, when it gets hot, glows. Uh, in this glass tube here, how it worked, we do not know. But it is, I am told, incredibly rare. And apparently it's very well sought after this. They're keeping hold of it here, and so they should. So as we're making our way around inside this building, you'll notice all these well, I thought they were tiles, but they're not. They're actually glazed brick. There you go. So they are all over this building, as you will see. Some of them are covered in soot in the ventilation room, as you would expect. But they are. So we're uh, heading further down in the George's Dock building. So the massive chamber that you saw right at the top of the stairs with the big fans in, that is for the foul air from the tunnels. Now we're going to be heading into the fresh air part of the tunnel, or the building should I say. So this is, I'm presuming, at ground level now. Yeah, so that's behind our big green loading bay doors. So there's the loading bay. So this is now where we draw in the fresh air from outside and pump it into the tunnel. So it's basically a giant loop going round. But again, you can see the arc here for one of the uh, drums that hold the turbines. Like I say, we're now in the lower level, so we're at ground level, or just below ground level now. And you can see just up there is the foundation for the other room above, which housed the large turbines for the foul air. We just look at the size of that steelwork or the ironwork up there, holding all that weight above us. Okay, so we're quite lucky today because we're gonna see a fan starting up right behind me here. You're gonna see the doors open and the turbine or the fan start to turn and she just told me 25 tons of weight on that fan there that's going to start turning so let's get a good shot and we'll, we'll trigger the fan startup here we go <laughs>
up from stationary to only half speed. So it can go double the speed of that. Just get you a bit of a closer shot. It's so good. Just to hear it start up and watch these giant doors open. So like I was saying a minute ago, this is the fresh air room or the fresh air intake. So this is where the fan sucks all the fresh air in and pumps it into the tunnel, as opposed to the foul air room, which was at the top of the building. Now, you can see how far up the building this goes, if you just look up there. So the fresh air comes in from up there, through the vents on the building, into this room, into the fans, which then get turned around and pumped 125 feet below the ground and down into the tunnel and into the vent shaft in the tunnel, which we'll see. And again, you've got the huge drums behind me here. You can see the large uh, round shaped drum, I don't know what you would call them, containers. Housing. <laughs> housing, there you go, housing. housing. For the large turbines. Uh, so as you can see in here, everything is a lot cleaner as it would be. There's no soot, or not much anyway, on any of this paint or the tile, or sorry, the bricks. I was going to say the tiles, the bricks. So the only muck you're going to get on the bricks in here is going to be from the dirty air outside. <laughs> but we won't talk about that. So we're currently in the airlock, just exiting the chamber where the fans were. So every time you exit, you've got to go through double doors, which are airlock. But we've just spotted this uh, all looking room here, and they're not sure what it is, but I'd hazard a guess, maybe some kind of a coal bunker or storage area of some sort. It's not much to see really, it's, it's empty and uh, yeah, it would have been used for something back in the day. But like I say, we are beneath the ground now, so we're below ground level. Some more rooms here, again, below the ground level now, so we are heading down towards the tunnel some old batteries there, she was just saying. And uh, another empty room here. So lots of these old Art Deco bunkers underground. Yeah. So this is a more modern fan chamber in here. Again, for fresh air. So if you just look up here, that's back up to street level there. And we've got a bit of debris on the uh, filter up there. For the Liverpool home Homecoming Parade. You can see a few cans of Stella up there, <laughs> a few bottles of water. But anyway, this is the vent intake, and then obviously the air would come in here and into these modern turbines. And like I said, she said modern, but these are from the 1960s. Now they do work, but they don't use them today. They still use the original ones. Now, so these are what you would find in the Kingsway Tunnel, which is the more modern 1960s tunnel further up the river. And uh, she said they don't need them anymore today because cars have got cleaner engines today than what they used to do. So they don't require them anymore because the two older ones are, are sufficient enough. But if they want to, they can use these. And uh, they roll around on tracks as well, as you can see down there. So they can be swapped around and moved about as well, which is brilliant. Join me in the next episode where we venture below the ground, through the service corridors and into the Queensway Tunnel even going below the road deck and into the hidden sections of the tunnel. See you in the next one.